Hello, welcome everyone to another financial analysis video with myself, Moe Damin, and my colleague, Ted Wayman. Today, we are looking at a semiconductor company called AlphaWave. Now, uh, they are a Canadian company that has floated on the UK stock market. Uh, and just before we go into this, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially if you've requested this. And we had three people request this, which we'll come on to later on. Uh, and if you're a subscriber, you will receive an instant notification when we publish this video. So it's in your interest to do so. Now, Alpha Wave, uh, essentially, they are a semiconductor business. And so they help, um, they really provide high speed uh, connectivity for kind of tier one style customers. So those that are very data intensive, like, you know, data centers, you know, 5G network infrastructure manufacturers, you know, even things like autonomous vehicles. So how do I explain this? Now imagine, uh, so their designs and technologies basically help chips communicate with each other faster and with uh, less energy, right? Less, less intensive costs, um, which, is, which is, has huge applications. So, um, you know, chips on a range of devices like smartphones, uh, you know, data centers, autonomous vehicles, gaming uh, gaming consoles etc you name it if there's a chip in there that needs data connectivity their designs and technology are supposed to help those chips talk to each other faster and with less energy um so this is going to be a very interesting uh business to look at it's involved in a in, a, in an industry in space like uh, nvidia um intel arm etc um so what i want to do first is thank our viewers and there were three of them who made this request so Clearly, quite a popular, uh, quite a popular business to look at, and a relatively new one in terms of their um, their flotation in the stock market. So, they floated in UK stock market in May of this year, two thousand and twenty-one. Uh, not a lot of movement between then and now in terms of their stock price, and we'll show you that later on. So, stick around. However, in the last year, it did reach a peak in August and dropped back down again. So, uh, we will look at the finances won't tell us much in terms of the stock movement because there's a huge amount more involved in that, but you will see some analysis on a, a fairly new entrance into this very big space with huge and, and wide implications. So Ted, let's have a look at this company, its finances. What, what have we found for our viewers? Okay, so thank you very much, Moeed. And um, yes, yeah, so uh, AlphaWave. So what's interesting about AlphaWave is that they are, they're a Canadian company. As you mentioned, they've just recently listed in the um, UK, but because they've only recently listed in the UK, they haven't filed any accounts here in the UK. So if you go to a company's house, you're not going to find any accounts at all. If you go to their website, there are no accounts, which I find almost unfathomable that a company lists and people invest without actually seeing the financials of what they're investing in. The only thing I could find was this uh, expected intention to float, um, which you know, says not for release, publication or distribution, but hey, it's available on the internet anyway, so why not? Let's have a look at it. Um, and this has got some very, very headline numbers. So this is all we've got to go on is these headline numbers. So quickly, we're down to um, the, uh, the key numbers here. They are and what you'll notice is that they've changed their, um, their accounting year. So um, they were uh, had a year end of May. Um, they then sort of changed it to the seven months uh, to 2019. And then they've got the sort of the year ended 2020. So um, this, for example, this 44 million, uh, and it's in Canadian um, uh, thousands of dollars. So that's 44 million uh, Canadian dollars. Um, we can compare this to this six, uh, 0.9 million dollars so that's a massive increase that's a like a 540 percent increase um but it's not really comparable to this number because it's only this number is only for seven months for example so what are we seeing here well um what we see is that the company is first of all there's massive increase in revenue now i don't know whether that comes through organic growth uh, or through um a growth through acquisition um but they are growing massively the expenses do not appear very high. Uh, a, a quick add up, you'll notice that, that these three numbers do not make the total expenses. So there's a couple of other expenses as well that they haven't included. But even so, the operating profit is, you know, is massive. I mean, this is a 54% uh, operating margin, very, very profitable. And if we scroll down to the next page, um, we see the, the bottom line 
uh, the kind of the net profit is also very, very high. $16 million, 37% net margin. I mean, that is massive. So these guys are, you know, it's almost like owning a printing press and, and just being allowed to print money, um, which obviously would be illegal. Um, so very, very profitable, um, significantly up. So, uh, you know, here we go to so 2019. Um, to May 2019, they were only at a 7% net margin, and they've managed to increase that to 37%. So, um, you know, there's, there's good news, you know, splattered all over this. Um, here's the balance sheet. And again, we're only getting the sum total. We can't see what's, you know, the detail of this balance sheet. But what we can see is the total current assets and the total current assets compared to the total current liabilities. Um, so liquidity is not a problem at all. Um, it looks like maybe they've got some debt that there's nothing in the income statement that is saying, look, this is the amount of interest we're paying. So um, we don't know if there's, you know, we could speculate there may be a little bit of debt in there, but the, if they are paying interest, they're not paying very much. Um, uh, and therefore it, it won't be a significant part of this business. So, you know, pretty debt free, mainly equity, uh, uh, equity driven. There's the equity um, uh, sitting on the balance sheet um, and a little bit of non-current assets, not a lot um, uh, compared with their uh, current assets, but then it's a, 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 you know, a, a software business they don't really need. They don't need manufacturing equipment and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you wouldn't expect that um, to see that. Um, so some total balance sheet looking pretty strong. Uh, those total current assets, very big number. Be interested to know how much of that is cash. Well, we can answer that question uh, down here. So of current assets, um, this uh, uh, cash flow statement tells us that the cash at the end of the period was 17.8, 17.9 billion dollars. So lots and lots of cash on the balance sheet very strong cash generation okay they have been making uh, cash losses in the past now they're generating lots of cash they are using some cash for investing um uh, so sorry that's a uh, so this is the investing so this investing tells me not a lot of investing and if they're not a lot of investing that's only 624 million that that growth is coming from organic growth rather than growth through acquisition. That's what I'm concluding from that. So, you know, if so, you know, this is just, I mean, this is a success story uh, written all over it. Somebody got a Midas touch in this one. You know, they are doing incredibly well. So very strong growth, looking like it's coming from organic growth, which is fantastic. Um, they hey, are just a, you know, they just have a quick note generating on, uh, yes. is it is 624,000, right? Not million. Six hundred twenty-four thousand. Yes. So what and did seventeen I say? and se yeah, six. You said six hundred twenty-four million, but there's yeah. a lot going on in here. And seventeen million, not billion, correct? Yes. Yeah. Seventeen okay. million. So yeah, that's me getting my thousands and millions muddled up. So well, well caught out on on, on that. Um, yeah. So just so we talk, just to be clear, um, they are generating cash of fourteen and a half million Canadian dollars, which is fantastic. So very very strong uh, cash generation. A um, little bit less than their, um, their EBIT, uh, you know, what we might guess is that sort of their EBIT, but even so, they are generating cash. A little bit of investing going on, 624,000, um, as you mentioned, uh, you know, so they're not buying companies. That's the point we're making here. And there is some cash being used in financing activities. Maybe that's buying back shares. Maybe they've been paying back debt if they, if they had any. Um, and the sum total is that they finished the year with 17 uh, nearly 18 million dollars in cash so you know something like a third of their current assets um is made up of cash so you know really really you know strong cash flow strong balance sheet massive profitability massive growth you're kind of thinking i mean you know it's almost like they can't put a foot wrong so let's have a look at what the market thinks of these guys in terms of the share price um, and here it is, as you said, it hasn't really gone anywhere. It's kind of, it's gone down and then back up again and then down again, it's bouncing around. Um, but what we do see here, uh, and we'll just highlight that, is this PE ratio, very expensive. Okay, this is a very, very expensive company. This is 240 times earnings, which means if they don't grow, it's going to take you 240 years to get your money back. However, if they do manage to grow at 500% per year for the next 
10 years, um, then I think they're going to end up dominating the world. Um, so, you know, maybe this is a, is a, a, a you know, a, it, it could be relatively cheap. So, you know, what we're talking about, and you reiterate it um, again and again, Moeed, is that, you know, we've looked at the financials, but the financials is only part of the story. So, you know, what is the story that goes alongside this? Is this company growing? Is it expected to, to continue to see that stellar growth? Are we going to see, you know, sales reaching the billions? And if so, you know, this is a cheap company, buy, fill your boots. Uh, or, you know, has it has it saturated its market? Has it plateaued? Has it peaked? Um, you know, and is it going to flatline now? In which case, this is an expensive stock. So personally, I don't I don't know the market. I don't know, um, but I kind of feel that you know, if you've got a company that's uh, you know on forty four million Canadian dollars, that's not a big number. That you know, we're not you know we're not like you know. At Facebook at 55 billion or Apple at 255 billion um, uh, of revenue or whatever they're doing. I mean, you know, this, this is this is a relatively small company. It looks to me like they've, 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 they've found the nugget of gold. They've got something that's working really well. People want it. It's high margin. They're growing rapidly. Um, maybe, just maybe, this is the nugget of gold that we've been looking for. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe you and I should have a little dabble and just, you know, stick our um, uh, stick our pension in there. Maybe not pension, but certainly stick uh, in the uh, in the risk portfolio for sure. I mean, yeah, you know, we talk about this all the time, Ted. That we only look at the financial, uh, the analysis in terms of the fundamental financials, and we ask, well, recommend that people look at other information on investment thesis. In, for this company especially do so because the finances we showed are unaudited finances, right? So it doesn't contain the detail for you to really make a strong or have a strong picture of the business. And, and for this one, for sure, you absolutely have to put a lot more research into the other areas. But I mean, still valued at 2 billion, right? Market cap, right? On, 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 a, uh, on a revenue of 44 million Canadian dollars. So, um, you know, if anyone knows this industry incredibly well, you know, leave a note in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you all. Uh, so yeah, we have to then... be careful here, Moeed. So don't forget, we're, we're, with the valuation we're looking at is in is in uh, is in pounds, pounds because it, yes. it's little, and of course we're dealing in. So so the price is about is about four billion Canadian dollars, uh, which is my kind of what I converted uh, uh, just uh, just earlier. Uh, so eighty eight times sales. So that's that's really what we're looking yeah, at. The price right. to sales is eighty eight times. Again, it's not a metric I personally use a lot, but you know, people yeah. people do like using that. Yeah. Well, if if they make it big like Nvidia and others, and their designs are are that that uh, popular, right? And it delivers on what they say. Who knows, right? As you say, right? So this could be a good one. Uh, I'm sure this has been a, a really valuable uh, video for all of our all of our viewers. Love to hear your thoughts. Uh, do like like, share, subscribe. And if you have a company, just as our three three colleagues, uh, three three fans here suggested, if you have a company you'd love to look, love us to look at, do leave a note in the comment section. As you saw now, we will honor that and uh, and analyze that company for you. So until the next video, thank you everyone. Thank you, Ted. This was a very interesting one indeed. Thanks a lot, Moeed. We we will try and honor it, Moeed, but we're getting a lot of requests we'll at the moment. So we're... that's true. That... <laughs> yeah. See you later. I was over promising there, but okay, we'll we will. <laughs>